The Rudy Gobert show boing boing has to stop. And you might be asking B Souls, what makes you say that? Don't ask me, ask NBA players because in the span of five or six days, there have been three. Yes, three Rudy Gobert Shaboing Boing clips that went on social media. Starting with this one from the Gills Arena podcast, Dwight Howard was on the pod and he had to say this. What's your assessment of Rudy Go Gobert's impact on defense? Frank, I mean, it's, it's tough to say because, you know, I never want to say nothing negative about any player. This is going to be a crazy, but watch. But I don't think he deserved those defensive player of the years like he got them. I feel like he's a great team defender, but for what he did to get those defensive player of the years, I don't see it. I don't see him being an elite defender. I see him as somebody who has the size. He's 7'2". So when you're 7'2", and you're playing with athletic guys, and you don't have to do nothing but clean up their mistakes or, you know, just be big in the paint. So, I mean, it's, it's really hard to say that he is an elite defender to have four Defensive Player of the Year awards. It, this year, he was actually up in the pick and rolls. He was moving his feet. He was talking more. He was actually being aggressive. The years before that, I think they just gave it to him because of his team defense and how everybody was on the team. I'm sorry, but coming from Dwight Howard, this is a crazy take. Because mind you, Dwight Howard is the same player that won, what, three, four DPLYs, primarily being a help defender and primarily being an elite shot blocker. He didn't get those DPOYs for being a switchable big that can guard the Kobe's and the LeBron's of the world. He couldn't stick with Steve Nash and Chris Paul out there in the perimeter. He also had a team of non-athletic wing defenders where when players just blowed by them, Dwight Howard was just there to clean them up. And Dwight Howard is also a player that benefited off of his own physical gifts. And when Shaquille O'Neal was criticizing Dwight Howard all of those years for not being skilled enough, I was on Dwight's side because... Honestly, I only care about production. And at the end of the day, I don't care if Rudy Gobert is seven foot two. I don't care if he has an abnormally long wingspan. These are physical attributes that make him great. The same way LeBron James has uncontrollable physical attributes that make him great. Same thing with Dwight Howard. Same thing with Shaquille O'Neal. To me, this is just a defensive version of uh, Giannis isn't as good of a scorer because he just runs and dunks. Like, no, I don't, I don't care about that. If Giannis is giving you 30 points a night on really good efficiency and that doesn't drop off in the playoffs, I, I don't care because the three, five moves he got, you cannot stop him. So same thing with Rudy Gobert. Now I get it. Is it more impressive to do the things that Rudy Gobert is doing when you are, let's say, six foot seven, six foot eight, six foot nine? Absolutely. It is more impressive. But at the end of the day, if y'all are blocking shots at the same rate, y'all are affecting shots at the same rate. At the end of the day, to me, y'all are the same player. Not to say that Dwight and Rudy Gobert are that, but I'm just saying the, the idea of, okay, it is more impressive for a smaller player to do that thing. Fine, that's fine. But at the end of the day, what is the production? That's all I care about. And to say that Rudy Gobert is not an elite defender, I would like to ask, out of all the elite defender bigs in the league, how many of them are elite than by Dwight Howard's criteria? It'll probably be Bam... I guess AD with the criteria we're talking about, but even AD is a guy that really benefits off of his abnormally long wingspan and, and physical abilities. Victor Wembanyama was second in DPOY last season as a rookie, and he's a seven foot four big that definitely benefits off of his frame and is a guy who can't really switch out on the perimeter, and people have criticized his ability to defend in the post. So is Victor Wembanyama not an elite defender? And also, I just found it weird that the initial question was just, yo, Dwight, how do you feel about Rudy Gobert's defensive impact? And it immediately went to, yeah, I don't think he deserved those DPOYs. Can we just talk about, like, what he brings to the game? Like, wh what does he bring to the game? Why do we immediately got to go to he didn't deserve those DPOYs? Like, this, this is crazy. And maybe the clip is just out of context and they cut a lot of stuff out. But come on, come on, bro. We can do better than that. But I told y'all there's three clips today. That was just the first one. The next one is from NBA rookie. Well, he was a rookie last season. Derek Lively. They played the Minnesota Timberwolves. There is zero reason. Rudy Gobert should have been on that court. Zero. But you are paying him about $40, $50 million. You better get your ass out there and figure it out. And he didn't. And he didn't. And he did not. Now, is what they said technically wrong? Not really. But I, I just cannot escape who the messenger are of these clips. It's, it's, it's insane. Derek Lively is the same player the very series after 
got neutralized when the Celtics put Jason Tatum on him and got rid of his ability to be a lob threat. He's the same guy. And to say Rudy Gobert had zero reasons for both of them to double down. <laughs> Rudy Gobert had zero reasons. Zero. To be on the court is just, that's that's insane. To say Rudy Gobert has no utility against a team that primarily operates with two shot-creating point guards who also take advantage of attacking the rim, as well as two lob threat bigs, is crazy. Now, was he getting cooked by Luka? Yeah, but one, it's Luka. Everyone gets cooked by Luka, and especially Rudy Gobert, who is a rim-protecting center, not known for his ability to switch on guards, especially on the caliber of Luka Doncic, yeah, I mean, I kind of expect him to get cooked. And you might be saying, b souls that's why you bench him. Different lineups have different pros and cons. And if you look at that Minnesota Timberwolves team, if you put anyone else at center, there is a clear lane to the basket that cannot be stopped. Who is going to stop Luka from driving to the rim? Carl Anthony Towns? Nas Reed? So to put all of that on Rudy Gobert is just kind of crazy to me. Now, let me just say this. I am very high on Derek Lively. I love his potential, especially playing next to Luka. I also think Derek Lively has the potential to be one of the elite defenders in the league and has the capability to get the big contracts that Rudy Gobert has right now. And I just hope when we get to a point where Derek Lively is the one being benched in closing minutes of a pivotal playoff game because of matchup reasons, that when Derek Lively has his own big contract, that he's not going to be the one complaining. Because after this clip right here, I don't want to hear it. It was just basketball reasons. Got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. I don't want to hear. What was I supposed to do? Is that my role? I don't want to hear that. Figure it out, Derek Lively. Because for all intents and purposes, unless Derek Lively has this insane bag that I'm just not seeing, unless Derek Lively turns into this elite perimeter defender, his role on the Dallas Mavericks is going to be relatively similar to Rudy Gobert's role on the Jazz. He is going to be a rim-protecting big. He is going to be a pick-and-roll partner, a lob threat. He's a guy that rightfully so you do not want defending out on the perimeter. So if anything, I just hope the best for Derek Lively because, man, that's going to be a crazy clip to bring up if, if the same thing happens to him in the future. But crazy enough, the worst is yet to come. But honestly, it was kind of expected because it's coming from Shaquille O'Neal. Wolt NBA player. Oh, Rudy Gobert. Oh, my God. I knew he was going to say Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. He's worse than Ben Simmons? Ben Simmons is another bum. <laughs> no, because you know why? I'm sorry to Rudy Gobert no, and Ben Simmons. No, because cause, cause, cause I'm going to tell you why. If you sign a contract for 250 show me 250 It's the reason why I walk funny and why I can't turn my neck and why I can't do it because I play for my 120 So you got guys like him that the system over. They're making all this money and they can't play. So I don't respect guys like that. Like, like you know, every time I make these comments, people will think I'm hating, but this, these are facts. You got teachers, you got firemen, you got doctors who, who have real jobs and don't get paid shit. You know, I would love to pull the card that in a vacuum, this technically isn't hate, but I'm going to be honest, it is. And if I'm being a head ass for doing this, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll be the head ass. But in the question of who is the worst player of all time, Rudy Gobert is nowhere near close to being the worst player to ever step foot on an NBA hardwood court. No, that's just not the case. But also, if we want to bring it to a contractual thing, how you play relative to your contract, that is still not Rudy Gobert. Chandler Parsons exists. Tobias Harris exists. Outside of the vacuum of this clip, there is a lot of evidence that says that Shaquille O'Neal just doesn't like modern bigs for whatever reasons. Maybe he's jealous of the contracts that they're getting. I don't know. But from JaVale McGee to Dwight Howard to now Rudy Gobert, do we see the pattern here? Does he talk about bigs before his time like this? I, maybe I just haven't seen those clips. And especially all of those years hating on Dwight Howard, I think is the reason why I don't really care about the whole contractual point that he brought up in this clip. Because Dwight Howard is a guy that was peaking at all-time levels. At the peak of his powers, he was an MVP caliber player, arguably a top three player in the league. He led the Orlando Magic to the finals in 09. He was doing all of these things. Yet you were still hating on Dwight Howard back then. So Shaquille O'Neal has criticized centers who have peaked at all-time levels. He has criticized centers who were just role players who didn't get a big bag. And now, Rudy Gobert is just a guy in the middle. It is just so funny to me when NBA players try to criticize the internet and social media and the sports media that aren't athletes because of the dumb stuff that they say because they just keep on pushing propaganda and hating on players. When now that they have the mic, 
when now they have the same capabilities to make the platforms that we have. They say a lot of the same stuff we do. It, that just is the reality of things. They aren't talking about just X's and O's all day. They care about these legacy conversations. They care about these ranking conversations. Maybe not as much as we do, but they do care about them as well. They aren't prone to not pushing propaganda. They also have biases. And you can call them nerds all you want, but at least the people who are really deep into analytics literally have numbers and statistics to back up their takes and opinions. Listen, bro, at the end of the day, Rudy Gobert is not a perfect player, but same thing with a lot of our greats. They are not perfect players. And at this point, I, what what expectations do y'all have for Rudy Gobert? Because it seems like out of this world. Y'all expect him to guard Steph Curry and Luka Doncic out in the perimeter. I feel like at this point, y'all are expecting him to be like a good offensive player when that's never been the case. And I'm not going to lie, there really is just no reason for there to be three clips like this in the first week of September when Rudy Gobert is not playing basketball and the NBA season isn't even going on and the like Olympics are done too so the only basketball going on is the WNBA right now like what 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 caused this the Rudy Gobert hate has definitely gone overboard it, it it just has and the way people are talking about him now I would like to say the pendulum is swing to the point where he is underrated because the way people are talking about him it literally sounds like he doesn't do shit on the court like that's that's just how it sounds but with that being said I'm out of here peace